Hi everyone, today I am working on some cards using some celebration paper and I wanted to show this card before the end of the month because there's still some time to get it. Uh, it ends in February so it depends on when you're watching this video. But you can still adapt the card with other paper if it's too late for that. So I'm using Daffodil Daydreams which is in the Spring Mini Catalog and it happens to be about $54 and I think 75 cents for the bundle, the stamp and die together. And that's perfect because when you purchase $50 in the month of February and past January, you get to choose a free celebration item. And the celebration item I'm using to go with this bundle is, of course, the Daffodil Afternoon Paper. Now, a lot of people don't like the black in the Daffodil Afternoon Paper. And I got to say, at first, you know, you think that you wouldn't like black with flowers, but it works really nicely. It's very bold, and when you put it on a card as an accent, it's great. So I really like it. So you've got some daisies and daffodils. On the back, you've got some nice bold patterns. This is bumblebee, is the yellow used here. Mossy meadow and pear pizzazz are the greens. You've got some black and white, which is great. A nice kind of single tone floral. This is pale papaya. Here's that black I was talking about. Uh, flirty flamingo. I like these little, just little hearts. This would be cute on the baby card or some kind of sweet little Easter card. All of these would be great for Easter. Mother's Day is coming up, so these are really perfect for that. I really like this one with the pink and orange, like the pale papaya and, and um, flirty flamingo look great together. And this one's interesting. This is a paper design where you can cut it here and then cut it like this, and you've got a perfect background for a card. All you have to do it's right here, is add a little sentiment and you're done. Maybe a ribbon. And so this one is a great piece. It's hard to choose on that one because I really like this stripe. And then this bold, bold um, floral. And I don't remember what's on the back of that one. Oh yeah, this is the one I'm using. <laughs> this is a really pretty um, window pane check. Now, a lot of times our papers use a white background. This one is using a vanilla background, so it gives us an opportunity to use those vanilla envelopes. And um, also, uh, vanilla, we can color on vanilla, and that's a good reminder that you don't have to always use white, that it looks really pretty when you color on um, different colors, vanilla particularly. Okay, so this is the paper I'm going to use for my card. Another thing I wanted to show is that when I get these die sets lately, I had such a hard time putting them back when there's so many pieces and getting them fit onto the sheet again for me is often um, just impossible and I give up and then I have just a bunch of dies at the bottom of the envelope. I like to keep the envelopes they come in and keep it on the sheet that it comes in. I know there's a lot of ways that people store their dies. I like to keep them like this because then when I, if I resell them when they retire and I um, if I decide to do that, I've got all the original pieces and I like to spend my money on more supplies and not as much on more ways to organize things. That's just me. <laughs> anyway, so I trace around this, the dies. I saw that somewhere from some other demonstrator and I'm like, why have I not been doing that? So that's what I did. And so that's how I know where I'm going to put that butterfly and where I'm going to fit this die here for the flower. Okay, so that's it. Here's the set. I love that it's got a Mother's Day and Easter, perfect for spring, but the images here would be great for um, birthdays as well. And they're big enough that you can actually do a really pretty scrapbook page. And those papers would be great for that too. So I think that would be a really pretty springtime scrapbook page. Um, the dies are fun. I'm only going to use the basic outline die for this card, but an another card I'll show you in the future. How These are builder um, dies, and you can actually get some really pretty layer-on-layer, -layer, um, kind of almost 3D effect daffodils. You can have like just multiple colors. You know how you've seen different daffodils have, you know, yellows and oranges and whites and just really pretty and I just really think these dyes are fun. So I want to show you these um, at another time. This little thing here, I wondered what it was and it's actually like the center of a butterfly. So you can cut out the butterfly with an image already on it or just cut out cardstock butterflies. There's two sizes and then this little thing here is actually like the butterfly body. <laughs> it took me a minute to figure out what that was, so I wanted to point that out to you. Okay, so that is what this is going on here, and let's make the card. Now I'm going off of the paper, and I'm using pale papaya, and I've got just a card base in pale papaya. And then I've cut two little strips here of the patterned paper, like so. 
And then I'm using another die set. Sometimes I feel bad when I use more than one die set and a card because I don't want it to be that you have to have so much for the card. But this is one of those die sets that you kind of should have on hand. It's one of those perfect use for everything. It doesn't even have a stamp set necessarily that goes with it. I'm missing this one here, which I need for my card, so I'm going to find it in a second. Um, but you don't even need to have a stamp set with this one. You can get the dies on their own and just these different sizing of scalloped stitched rectangles are perfect on so many cards. Here's the other one. So then these labels fit so many sizes of our labels and our sentiments is what I mean. And you can layer them together for you know layers of different colored cardstock just for some more um, depth to your card or just use one. I'm just going to use this one today and this one. And I started cutting out all the pieces for this card because I'm actually using it for a swap. So those of you in my swap this week know what you're getting. <laughs> but they got to go out tomorrow in the mail anyway, so that's okay. Um, anyway, I already cut out a bunch of these pieces. I meant to show you what I was going to do. I cut out my pale papaya piece and I need to, to make a lot because it's a swap. And I looked at how much pale papaya I had left over and I didn't have a ton. And I was a little concerned that by the time I cut the bases and all these scalloped rectangles that I wouldn't have enough to do the sentiment. And that's okay. I could have chosen a different color for my sentiment. But then I thought, you know what? Why am I not doing what I've said to do before? I've showed this technique where you can use what's going to be underneath a layer and cut it out. No one's going to know because you're layering. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to just stamp my sentiment right here. And it doesn't work every time because sometimes your sentiments might be larger. I just inked that so I'm going to move it around, make sure I get an even stamp. Okay, and then we're just going to cut this out and no one will know that that little missing piece is under there. I'm loving this little mini um, die and emboss machine, I have to say, because it's so small, it can fit right on top of my ink pad holder, and it's just right there. And my other, my larger one, is across the room. So this I can just grab and use. Okay, so that is saving me some cardstock, and so that is a good thing. Okay, and then like I said, no one's going to see this because I'm going to layer it underneath this piece of very vanilla. So I cut, this is the um, second largest of the rectangles from that set. So then I cut a piece of very vanilla to go in here, and I want to tell you the dimensions for that. I cut it, let me show you with my ruler really quickly because I'm going to forget. Okay, so I cut it two and three eighths um, wide by three and one, two, I think I cut it. Three and three eighths. So that's not two and... <laughs> sixteenths, three sixteenths. Sorry, I don't know those, I don't use those little measurements very often. So this one is in fact three and three eighths, but this one is two and three sixteenths. Little, I call them ticks, <laughs> so I didn't want to say that out loud to you because I always, when I count them to myself, I say, all right, two and three ticks. So I didn't want to say that to you, but now I just did. Okay, so that's what I cut it. All right, and then on a scrap piece of very vanilla, I wanted more height and dimension, so I'm going to cut my flower out. You could just stamp the flower straight on there and have it be very flat, um, but I like to add a little bit of dimension, so that's what I'm going to do here with the daffodil flower. So I'm using, for this card, just the single flower. There's another one that's um, a grouping, and that's really pretty, too. I've used this on another card, and you can look back. I did a video showing one template three cards and I used that daffodil and that's another video if you want to see that I could put a link in my video in the description 
Okay, so we've got that, and I also need a butterfly, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp my butterfly. All right, so all my stamping is done, and now I just need to color this. Now, the colors in here are Mossy Meadow and Pear Pizzazz, and I really wanted to use Pear Pizzazz, but I don't have Stampin' Blends in Pear Pizzazz. I don't have every color, but I decided that's okay. You can use Stampin' Write Markers with your Stampin' Blends. They're not going to blend, so if you're trying to blend something, that's not going to work, but it's just okay if you use them on the same image. So I'm just going to color the leaves in Pear Pizzazz. Now, I do have Mossy Meadow. Mossy Meadow comes in a Stampin' Blend. But these are just leaves and pretty straight, and that's okay, I decided. There we go. Now the one thing about Stampin' Blends is that they give you the ability to make a darker area, but you can go over an already markered area with another layer of ink and get it darker by just giving it another layer, like where the leaf folds. Not as perfect as the Stampin' Blends, but it's going to give you a pretty effect. Okay, now I do have blends for my flower and butterfly. So I'm going to use Pale Papaya and Flirty Flamingo like the paper. And I went with Pale, the, the lighter of the Pale Papayas, the palest of the Pale Papayas, for my flower. And I didn't even bother bringing in the dark for the flower at all. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna say, well, the center might be darker, but in fact, you know, maybe we'll, I'll show you the differences. We can decide if it was worth it or not. So you could do the center a little darker and maybe bring some darkness. I thought since I wasn't doing a lot of blending on the leaves that maybe I would leave it more flat, but I think I will use the dark. Why not? And then I used the um, pale papaya on the butterfly as well. And I did use the dark on that. So let's go ahead and use that. And I just did it all one tone. Okay, and then the flirty flamingo. I'm going to use the blunt end and just mimic the paper by doing it along the edge. Like it's got a lacy little pink edge. Just like the paper. Just kind of went down a little bit. Okay, and then I did the tips. And this is the darker of the flirty flamingos. Okay. And now we're just going to cut these out. I like to use a little washi tape on there. Oops, I did. to mention that I have a layer of basic black and this is four by five and a quarter and so these are just an eighth of an inch smaller and so I cut this one is um, two and a quarter and this one is just a little longer than it needs to wait no this is one and three quarters sorry and this one is two and a quarter it doesn't quite need to be two and a quarter but I wanted to give a little bit of um, overlap just so that when I put them down I had a little bit of play so this one is one and three quarters and this one is two and a quarter and then the length here is just an eighth of an inch shorter. <laughs> so I want to say it's um, a tick under, <laughs> but no, it's an eighth of an inch shorter shy of the um, five and a quarter. So it's five and an eighth. Why do I have a problem with those eighths? I tell you, math is not my fun thing. 
And you know, in crafting, you always say, I was told there was no, be no math. <laughs> but there is, there is math in crafting. Okay. I did not mean to drop that. Okay, so I'm going to leave a little tiny, sometimes a tinier mat. Oftentimes I use a whole quarter of an inch mat on my projects. But sometimes just that tiny shadow of black or a little mat, skinny little mat is all that's needed and it kind of is less um, distracting and it kind of just focuses in on the pattern. Now this one is, does have an up and down so you don't want your daffodils upside down so make sure you've got them going the right way. And you're going to give a little bit of mat and it's going to overlap this little piece just a tiny bit. There we go. Okay, and then these can just get glued together. So like I said, no one's going to see that you cut this out. And I went ahead and glued this down flat rather than adding more dimensional. Sometimes I put a lot of dimensional so you've got several high. But, you know, lately I just want to make sure that the post office accepts things. And I really like to send cards in the mail, and I want to make sure that they get where they're going without a lot of fuss. And so, so I've been kind of only using a, maybe two layers deep of my dimensionals. And the nice thing about dimensionals is that they are squishy, so they can go through the mail. Okay, so then I've got, so these are all flat, no dimensionals. Now I'm going to add dimensionals. I am going to put down this little flower. So I'm going to add a couple of the larger ones. And then I love that we have two sizes now because then I added just a small one here where a larger one wouldn't have fit as well. Okay. Oh, I forgot what I wanted to do first. And I did that on my first card too. I wanted to throw down a little pale papaya background here because there is another stamp in the set that's like splatters. Let me find it. So it's just a little splatter and I wanted to just give a little bit and I should have done it before gluing it down because you never know if um, flip it. You never know if um, the layers are going to cause some kind of darker light spots. I'm not super worried about it here because I'm going to put that flower kind of on top of the whole thing. So there. So I've got just a little bit of background on there. Now I'm going to layer, and you barely see it, so I think I need a little bit more. I like to kind of turn them different ways so that they're not all the same. Okay, now I'm putting that down. I was trying to decide if I wanted it tilted or straight, and I'm going just straight. Okay, and then for this, I'm going to add dimensionals to this too, but it's not really going to add a lot of height because I'm going to go over the um, existing height of that. So I'm not really adding any height. And then this is going to come right here. Center that a little better. There we go. And then my little butterfly is also going to be up on dimensionals. in the top corner. Oops. Like so. Here, now for the inside, I'm going to put a little bit of very vanilla. Now, a lot of times when we're cutting our cardstock, we have little tiny strips left over because, you know, it's never the exact perfect, you know, end at the exact 12 inches when you're cutting it up. So you always have those little strips left over and I like to use those on the inside of my cart. So that's what I'm doing. Now for this one I had this left over and I thought any of the patterns would work. So some of my carts will have a little stripe of this on the inside and some will have a little stripe of this one. So let me glue that down. And then I made another butterfly 
to go on the inside. All right, this is my team swap this month, and that will go right in here. And again, this would make a great Mother's Day card, birthday. It's just so springy. So this paper is only available through the end of February, so you've got one week from what I'm filming this. And um, so I hope that you'll take advantage of that. I have a BOGO going on at my blog right now where if you buy something from the something new from my online store from Stampin' Up! from me, you can shop my retired garage sale um, and get some stuff for free there too as well. So you've got Celebration and the BOGO. So check that out. And I'm so glad that you joined me today. I hope you'll subscribe and come back again. And that would be awesome. I'm really enjoying this whole YouTube thing. And so um, I like seeing the thumbs up or any of those types of things. <laughs> Helps motivate me to keep going. So thank you so much for watching and all your support. Bye.